everybody calls Han Solo a bitch. Bring him on. I prefer a straight fight to all this sneaking around. I don't know where you get your delusions, laser brain. Oh, come on, bro. It's the wars. All right, so this has been a week of this cancellation and that cancellation. And we know if there's an event that's important to you, you already know its status. So we're not going to beat on that. Let's have some fun. This is The Wars and More. I'm Joe. And of course, with me is my good buddy, Doug. Hey, Doug, how you doing this week? Doing pretty good. You know, considering the circumstances. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not the best of times, but it's also not the worst of times. This is you know, not it's a tale of two cities. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not. You know, it's we can make the best of a bad situation. Absolutely, yeah. We have you know, all we, kinds of ways to do that now. Yeah, I mean, there's still tons of things we can do. Tons of things to take our mind off stuff. Um, yeah, is it bad out there? Sure, but we got to focus on the good to get us through. That's right. So I hope everybody's doing that. I hope everybody's staying safe and uh, focusing on the good. That's what we're trying to do this week. We're 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 pushing the negativity out. That's right. There Absolutely. is no negativity allowed on this show <laughs> this week. Right. We are here to have a good time. Talk about Star Wars. We love Star Wars. We know you love Star Wars. That's why you're listening to us. That's right. Sure ain't for my sexy voice. It's... <laughs> <laughs> well, but what's up? <laughs> I was just gonna say. Speaking of Star Wars, you know, we have the digital release of the Rise of Skywalker, yep. and you know, I hope you all got your copy and you're, you know, on your fifth or sixth viewing since having it in your home, whatever. Yeah, and. uh uh, checking out some of the behind the scenes stuff. So got just a, a couple of clips here from some of the be- behind the scenes material that kind of, kind of struck me a little bit because uh, it, it seems like some of the, some of the cast kind of felt the same way we did on a couple of things when it came to uh, certain characters. So I figure we can like, just play this and give our thoughts a little bit. So, uh, this is Daisy Ridley in regards to the character of Luke Skywalker. It's probably nice for Mark to be more like the Luke of old, which I think JJ felt like he really wanted that. It was nice to feel and even in the scene, to feel really comforted that, like, Luke Skywalker is here. Yes. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yes. <laughs> and that was, that was the moment. Like, that, that was the, ah, yes. Yes, exactly. Luke's here. Luke's back. Yes. You know, and, and, yeah, Luke's learned of his mistakes now right like yeah absolutely so I, yeah, I luke was back he understood what needed to be done and what needed to be done was to do things the way he did things right i didn't clip it but uh mark hamill in some of this behind the scenes stuff actually mentions uh jedi making mistakes you know, yeah and, and and it's true you know we've seen that plenty of times um but I, you know, there was, you know, we've we've harped on it, and we're not going to do that here. No, nope. I think we all know negativity that, free that uh, you know there was something off about Luke in the last film, but this one turned things around. It was nice. So, and I, I think uh, it's it's clear that uh, Daisy felt the same way, and 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 here we even have Mark. Uh, you know, it's it's classic Mark on the character of Luke, but I think he feels good about the character again from the way he's talking. I hope that if there's any lasting 
legacy of the character is the idea that you can accomplish anything you want if you are selfless and willing to do what's right for the greater good. You know, he was a, a symbol of optimism, and I, I, I think that's probably the most satisfying aspect of the character. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I that's what Luke has always been for me, you know, come from obscurity and you know save the galaxy right that's that's what luke skywalker has always been for me and he plays his part in doing that again very well in the rise of skywalker so yeah and i mean you know i mean and, and you think about today how things are today right yep optimism man oh for sure hope yeah, that's what we need right now. We need optimism and hope, and we 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 need to do the right thing. So just that's there's lessons in Luke Skywalker. <laughs> oh, absolutely, there always has been, and you know I'm hoping that uh, you know as Star Wars fans, we always we are we're always looking to pull those 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 lessons from the characters, you know, and for me, especially, uh, from the character of Luke. And I think, you know, we still have lots of opportunity to do so. So. Yeah. I mean, that's, awesome. that's mythology, right? Yeah, that's absolutely. That's absolutely. the purpose of mythology for to sure. take those lessons, you know? Yep. So that, that's the way star Wars was written. It was written in that style of mythology and, and, you know, yeah, <laughs> there's lessons there. Yeah. Totally. So pretty cool. Uh, something else I thought was pretty cool was, you know, and there's again, not to harp on anything, but, but there's been a <laughs> lot of talk about, you know, uh, the way Palpatine was brought back and, and, you know, how did this happen? How did that happen? You know, it, 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 some people have, have said, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like uh, they had to figure out something <laughs> to do with, you know, uh, something for a, a bad guy, right? Because Snoke's gone and, you know, Palpatine must have been like an afterthought. But I really don't think so after hearing this because uh, if there's any way that... Uh, Palpatine's return should be looked at. I think this is the very way it should be looked at because it makes the most sense to me. The idea came up of well, what if Palpatine lived on in some way? Within about 30 seconds of discussing that idea, we just knew that it was the right idea because we knew that this has always been a story of Skywalkers and Palpatines. It's a generational story, and the, the idea of the story of these grandchildren grappling with the same things that their predecessors had dealt with. It just felt poetic. My favorite scene from the prequels, Palpatine telling Anakin the story of, of Darth Plagueis the Wise and his obsession with cheating death. And it sits there like the greatest setup of all time. It certainly does. Yes. It is. And I it, like that that description. It's a generational story. Yes. You know, and you followed this family for six films. Yep. Right. Absolutely. It made total sense to follow it for the last three. Yeah. All the way through to the end. Especially since you're dubbing it at that point, the Skywalker saga. Right. So the Skywalkers have been in this, this conflict with Palpatines, right? Like, yep. I mean, when you, uh, you know, it's, it's mythology. It's, it's, it's a uh, classic storytelling, you know, again, it's, you know, the the Capulets and Montagues, it's the Hatfields and McCoys, it's you know classic storytelling. It's it's two right. families at war with each other. There's good and evil. And, and Right, and it's it's you know, like the there there, there was always that big hang up that, that Ray was a Palpatine. Yeah. And you know, you, you 
you put it in that sense, it's a generational story. It's always been about the Skywalkers and the Palpatines. Yeah. Although there was only one Palpatine for the whole first six. Yeah. <laughs> um, it makes sense that another Palpatine comes in to bridge that gap, to close that that story out. That a Palpatine helps bring about the end of this this conflict. Yes. There will be more conflicts. Oh, absolutely. I mean, much like real life, you end one conflict just to enter another. Uh, yes. Yes. This this is something that happens over and over <laughs> in real life and in storytelling. So, uh, But it was very poetic and very appropriate that a Palpatine brought about the end of that era of conflict. Yes, it's kind of, you say poetic, and it's kind of poetic that that's what it takes. You know? Uh, yeah, the yeah. Skywalkers have have done their very best to combat the evil that was Palpatine uh, for quite some time, but it actually takes a Palpatine to do it. And then, and then the fact that this Palpatine is a clone, right? Is a clone yeah. that, you know, they were able to somehow guide his essence back into, right? Yeah. The fact that he is a clone completely preserves what Anakin did. True. Anakin did end it. Yes. Outside forces intervened. Yes. Yes, this is true. This is not within control of any prophecy, any, you know, one being outside people intervened. So Anakin's, you know, redemption, his fulfillment of the prophecy is intact. Yes. He absolutely brought about the end of the sin. Yeah. And I, th- I think they were quite, you know, they understood that they could not reverse that, you know, uh, that, that would, that would bring on the, uh, <laughs> uh, the wrath of the fandom, I, I believe. But, uh, I think they were quite aware that that had to remain intact and it's Anakin's deed at the end of, uh, Return of the Jedi. So. I mean, I'll say this, and let me, Star Wars fandom, I love you guys. I love all of you. Yes. But green milk brings on the wrath of fandom. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't take much, does it? <laughs> I'm just saying it, it's <laughs> It's not hard to make fandom mad. <laughs> yeah. I love you, fandom. <laughs> <laughs> uh... you, know, you are a part of me, but... Yeah, it's easy to piss you off. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, in the spirit of, uh, you know, good vibes, good thoughts and all, uh, head of a fun little clip here of Anthony Daniels on The View. Uh, he was on there, you know, uh, he was promoting his book, uh, IMC 3PO, and uh, uh, just, you know, having a good time chatting it up but he had he did let one little thing come out that i thought wow if nothing else this guy is ready for his own disney plus series but <laughs> that's what he, what he had to say well the rise of skywalker marks the end of the latest star wars yeah. trilogy yeah. but will we see C-3PO again. Oh, he's, he's not over. I said to J.J. Uh, when we were filming, J.J. Abrams, you know, maybe it's time to put 3PO to sleep, you know, to give him an end. And he said, not on my watch. Oh, <laughs> I like it. But one of the great things uh, uh, that happened is that back in the day, 1975, you couldn't have video in your home. It didn't no. exist. Big yeah. TV studios, you could have it. Now, it's gone through all the iterations from laser discs <laughs> to whatever. And now you do have it, first of all, downloadable this yes. month. That's and at right. the end of the month, you can actually buy it on disc. And here's the important thing. When you have it on disc, you, can, you have control. Right. In the movie theater, psh, 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 yes. it whizzes by. Right. At home, you can say, oh, I want to see Anthony Daniels in that scene again. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so he's just up there having fun. So that's cool. But Good. what what about Good. you know, we're not ending three PO on my watch. You think there's something to this or uh is it JJ's just not gonna you know? I think it was just like JJ don't want no part of that. Yeah. Like terminate. He's like, 3PO. Are you kidding me? I'm gonna I'm gonna kill three PO. Yeah. They're already pissed that I killed Han Solo. Yes. <laughs> like, like you realize there will be mops with torches. Yes. And you know, like if I kill three PO, <laughs> I mean, I heard Joe. He was ready with Chewy. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's right. So. I don't know if there's any, any if that means anything, but I, it certainly sounds to me like uh, Anthony Daniels is ready for his own series. I think all I got to do is call him up. He'll be there. Yeah. Uh, at least to make appearances. Like, yeah. And, and if 3PO has been one of those characters. You yeah. know, 3PO and R2. They're just there, man. Yeah, for sure. And there's some of those characters that's like, yeah, I don't know. They, they, even even in like Rogue One, right? Yeah. Five seconds. Yeah, if that. But a resonating five seconds. Yes. Like they got slightly more screen time than Chopper. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> this is very true. Yeah. The only thing about Chopper is that like the camera didn't focus on him. Uh, right he was just there yeah he was just there uh we definitely had a moment where the camera focused on 3po and r2 and of course you know 3po's ticked off that you know you know nobody tells us anything yeah so yeah <laughs> so uh yeah i don't know i think uh i think we could see cameo appearances from anthony daniels in uh disney plus shows and i'm all for it all for it all for it because you know just like his book says he is c3bo absolutely and the one last thing i did want to make mention of about the uh the release is uh i didn't clip anything from it you know i figure uh you want to check this out for yourself, um, you know, that's the way to go. Uh, but there is like a a preview of a documentary that comes with the Blu-ray called uh, The Skywalker Legacy. So there's a few minutes of that that you can go online and check out. Uh, from the little bit that I saw, it looks like it go it goes all the way back. And it's encompassing all nine movies, and um, looks pretty cool. That's all I'll say. You get the Blu-ray, check it out. It'll be it'll be something else to help occupy your time for a little bit, and uh, you know something that I'm sure we could dive into. So, right on, right on, and that, yeah, that that's gonna be fun, and 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 I think that's something we'll definitely incorporate later. Yeah, I'm sure. Like something we can talk about later. Let's let's uh let's let that one ride. Yeah. All right, Doug. So I want to do something fun. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh, thanks. And but hold on. <laughs> I'm also putting myself on the spot here because I literally thought of this before we started recording tonight. Okay. I kind of gave you a hint. Yeah, yeah. Beforehand, but not enough of a hint. <laughs> I just want to have some fun. I want to do something we we don't do very often on this show. And I feel like we should do more stuff like this. Okay. And depending on this, how this goes, maybe we will. All right. But you've heard. It, it's very popular in Star Wars fandom to make lists, right? Yes. My favorite, Your favorite movie. This. Your favorite My favorite movie, one through 11 or whatever. <laughs> Star Wars movie. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, I understand that lists are ever evolving. And I know that, you know, depending on the day when I ask you these questions, your answer is going to change. Sure. 
But I want to go through each film, right? Okay. Every single theatrical release. Okay. So from one through nine, Rogue One and Solo. And I want you to tell me your favorite character and why. And I'll respond with my favorite character and why. Okay. All right. All right. So we'll start with the Skywalker saga itself and then do Rogue One and Solo. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. Episode one, The Phantom Menace. Oh, prequels. Okay. Oh, we're doing the whole Skywalker saga. Okay. <laughs> so favorite character. Why? Favorite character. Oh, I'm going to have to say Obi-Wan. Really? Yes. Why? You kind of have. Obi-Wan is in that in that film he's like he you know he's he's almost there. You know what I mean? He's still a Padawan. He's almost there to take the trials and almost almost ready to make that next step. He's he's almost still got some of that innocence from that you get off of Luke Skywalker in the OT at the beginning, right? And but being brought up in a far more organized system he's got a lot more polish to him and and it's just kind of cool to see the difference there right on all right how about you oh so i'm gonna say (laughs) dude i want to i want to so bad but i'm going to say episode one I'm going to say Padme. Oh, okay. Um, and the reason being is, is, is one Padme drives a lot of the emotion in this film. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And then the other thing is so many stories spawned off of Padme's reactions to things. I mean, this is just my opinion. Yeah. You know, Qui-Gon being a, like kind of a rogue. Yeah. Padme always thought Qui-Gon was so reckless. Yeah. You know, like just. I'm sure the queen wouldn't approve. And and I think that interaction is kind of the driving force for him being such a rogue, uh, along with the way the council feels about him. Right. But Padme's kind of fits about the way he was doing things was like, I think, important to that. Okay. And then I don't think Anakin's story, as far as episode one goes, is as good without Padme. Oh, like she, sure. her interest in him as a child really drove his character, I think. Yeah. yeah so I could see that. I just, yeah, I, 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 my number two is totally Jar Jar, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. I mean, really, honestly, I mean, Jar Jar drove the, the a lot of the things in that film, like emotion and, and humor, um, you knew things were bad when Jar Jar was kind of like, oh, crap, you know, oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and then not to mention, I just absolutely adore that scene when they're sinking underwater and he loses it. I just, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or not in trouble yet. What mean yet? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. So. All right. Episode two. Ooh, Okay favorite character and why oh man i oh i've got to go with obi-wan again <laughs> I, I, I just just because you know i we're seeing you know this is obviously it's the story of anakin right but we are also seeing a progression of obi-wan he is he has become everything that was expected of him. And we, in episode two, we get to see him in his prime teaching the Jedi ways to Anakin. Uh, it's like he, you know, in, in so many of the situations, he's, he's the one keeping his cool and trying to help show Anakin how to keep his cool. 
you know, successful or not, being brought up in that system, uh, it's just the next step in his progression that I, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I relate to it a little bit. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of like that. <laughs> I feel like that side character, you know, uh, not out front, but just off to the side and making sure everything's running smooth kind of guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I hope this don't happen too much. Uh Oh, but I'm going to agree with you. Obi-Wan is my favorite character in episode two. Okay. His growth from what you see in episode one, how he is just into that mentor role so well. Yes. Um, yeah, just, and, and all the things you said, I just love Obi-Wan in this film. Absolutely. He, he, he stole the show in episode two. And I, I, I agree with you 100%. I hope that's not a trend here. <laughs> right. As we go through the other films, I'm sure hoping we have differing opinions. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, this is just a complete backfire. Yeah. Well, hey, we'll see. <laughs> all right. Episode three. All right. This one's going to be a little different, a uh, little odd, I think, maybe. I don't know. But I'm going to say Anakin. Okay. Because this is where we get to see the breakdown. Uh, this is this is the the climax of the fall of that character. Uh, this is we experience all of the emotions that he's feeling along with him. Um, you know, we've talked about it before. Episode three is longer movie, but uh, still very fast paced in the storytelling. Uh, this is where we truly get to understand what it was that made a, a, a potentially great Jedi fall to the dark side. And, and I think at, at certain points in all of our lives, we've all been there, you know, yeah. and we've all had to walk it back and, uh, Anakin just wasn't able to do that. So uh, I think it gives us a little hint into ourselves and, you know, what, you know, the, the, the <laughs> obviously we're not Jedi, right? We not, don't have the fate of the galaxy in our hands, but, but kind of shows us what could happen if you walk down that dark path you're feeling sometimes. So, yeah, Anakin. All right. Well, I mean, I, this is a tough one for me. Okay. Because episode three is up there in my favorite star Wars films. Sure. Um, there are many performances I, I absolutely love in this film and, and, and many characters I love. Um, and really strangely all for the same reason. They all kind of drive the story in their own way. Anakin was my first gut reaction. Okay. But I'm going to go with Obi Wan. Okay. Um, and and I'll say this: like Padme is in a close third. Like this is three characters right here that these are the our our trio of this prequel yes, trilogy, right? Absolutely, yes. So these three characters were so hard for me to choose here, but I'm going with Obi Wan because of one his his reaction to Anakin's fall. Okay. Right. Yep. And how that drives everything, like how that makes you feel because, okay, you already felt, tra you already felt tragedy because you're watching Anakin. You, you watch this kid grow up, you see that story, but Obi-Wan's reaction to it. He can't believe it. Yeah. Well, he says it. Uh, yeah. It, I feel no, you. Yeah. And you know, and, and that's where like the Padme thing comes in too, because she's doing that same thing. She's having that same reaction. No, not Anakin, right? Right. But Obi Wan was also involved in Order sixty six in a big way. He survives. Yeah, he was attacked, but survived. Yep. So he he adds to that drama there too, because while you're seeing all these other Jedi die, 
you know, Obi-Wan makes it through. Yeah. And you see his panic and, 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 and wanting to alert the other Jedi and, you know, he's, he's being thrust into the very borders of what drove Anakin mad with everything that's going on. Yeah. But he holds true to what the Jedi have taught. Yeah. And, and he does everything within his power to help save whatever Jedi might be left too. I, that's one thing I did love about, uh, Obi-Wan's story in this is that after everything goes bad, he could have just gone and hidden, but he doesn't. He and Yoda go back, uh, re, uh, what was it? Reprogram the code or whatever to, to, for all the Jedi to come to the Jedi temple. And then, uh, you know, they split up to go confront uh, Vader and Sidious. So, yeah, I mean, you know, even through all of that, he's doing what's right. And, you know, and not only that, but he's being tasked with, he says it, I, I send me to face the emperor. I can't yeah, kill Anakin. Right. Right. Yeah. But yet he's still tasked with, you know, dealing with Anakin. Yeah. And even to the last minute, he's not hes not wanting to kill Anakin. He even tells him, look, it's over. Yeah. I've got the high ground. Don't try it. You know, like. Yeah. That's, he, he doesn't he, want to kill him. He's put into an impossible situation and comes out the other side. Not, <laughs> how do you put it? Uh, he comes out the other side alive, okay, but not. Not the same person he was going in. That's for sure. Right. Right. So, yeah, that's that's my pick. And why. Like, I just, it was hard. That's a hard one. It is because there's a lot to the story of episode three. Yes. And if you ask me tomorrow, it may be different. That's true. That is very true. But episode three, there's a reason why it's one of my favorite Star Wars films. It's just so rich. The characters are so good. It yeah. just It's hard to pick a favorite. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. And with all this stuff, like even if you're picking your favorite films, it's always hard to pick a favorite. Yeah. All right. So the original Star Wars episode four. This one's easy for me. Yeah. Yes. It is Luke Skywalker. Okay. Because growing up, I always wanted to be like Luke Skywalker. That's just the way it was. I was a young kid. Uh, you know, he, he he was the one who came from nothing and blew up the Death Star, saved the galaxy. You know, that was mm-hmm. that was the the larger than life story for me. You know, as a kid, that that just it did it for me. So Luke was Luke was a nobody that did great things. So it certainly okay. made you feel, you know, <laughs> middle-class American kid, like, uh, you could save the galaxy too. So right on. All right. Mine. Han Solo had a feeling, <laughs> dude. I love Han Solo in this film. Like it, he's one. He's comic relief. <laughs> yeah. Um, Two, he is the borderline bad guy. You know, he's in it for the money. Yes. He's he's total pirate, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. And I don't know if you even say bad guy, because, man. Well, that's why I say borderline. Like, yeah. he's, he's not in it to help. Right. He's in it for himself. Like, He's in it for himself. He's in it for the money. He's not there to help the cause. He's not there to help any individual person. He says as much. He says as much throughout the whole film. Yep. But in the end, he comes back, essentially saves the day. Yep. To help Luke finish what he was set out to do, destined to do. 
So yeah. he's a he's a very intricate part of Luke's destiny, especially in this film. And a lot of that has to do with the way Luke resonated with him. But he still had to make that growth. Yeah. So. I like it. Episode five. Ooh. This one. Okay. There's a lot of different places you can go here. Um, Because, again, much like episode three, the story is so rich and the characters are so integral. But. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, to, okay, like we said, this could change from day to day, but <clears throat> for right now, I'm going to say Lando Calrissian. Oh, nice. I mean, this guy is, again, he's put into an impossible situation. He has no special force powers. He's doing the best he can, running his, you know, gas mining operation and uh all of a sudden boom empire shows up you're gonna help us do this like it or not and everything he does <laughs> in a roundabout way you know again he's he's looking out for himself but <clears throat> um yeah he's also trying to help his friends as best he can. So, uh, you know, that's, it's, it's, I don't know. It's a very real, uh, analogous character, I guess you could say. Yeah. <clears throat> for, for, I imagine there were people running businesses in, let's say Nazi Germany who had to operate much the same way Lando did. Right. You know, there's my, my history coming into it. Yeah. Right on. I dig it. So I'm going to go with Darth Vader. Ooh. Okay. Darth Vader. This is the time where we get to see him at his worst, really. Like, yeah, his, his most menacing. Um, this is the set him up as the bad guy film uh <laughs> i would say solidify him solidify him <laughs> yeah as the bad guy. you you set him up but only kind of set him up <laughs> in this in this film you did not want to be commanding a star destroyer under him that's for sure yeah you you didn't want to serve for him exactly like to hell with being on the other side you didn't want to be on his side yeah i mean this was the ultimate bad guy in our opinion at this point. Yeah, totally. And you got to see a little bit, just a little bit of that turmoil within him. Oh yeah. Dealing with Luke. Yep. Just a hint. So yeah, Darth Vader is definitely my pick for episode five. My favorite character, hands down, probably every day of the week. You ask me that's my favorite for okay. episode five. I like it. I mean, he is, he's in charge. He's a badass. He can kick the crap out of you <laughs> and he will choke you for no reason other than you mop the floor wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. Had to go with the villain on this one. <laughs> nice. Episode six, Return of the Jedi. Oh, okay. Um, I'm gonna have to go with Luke mm -hmm. because he never, never loses faith that he can bring Anakin back from the dark side. He mm -hmm. he has his moments of of doubt. Okay, the whole you know. I'm endangering the mission thing and, and, uh, things like that. But once he, once he's sure of what he has to do, he has the resolve to go do it. So and I think that's that right there again is a lesson that we can all take away from Luke Skywalker. Uh, it's like all your options are kind of there in front of you and, 
this one might not be the option that you really want to have to do, but it's what you have to do. So, you know, it's, it's, we all have times like that in our lives and we just have to, uh, you know, pull yeah, ourselves take it on, head on. Yeah. Yeah. Take it on head on. Exactly. Yep. So. Yeah. And I'm with you 100% here. Luke Skywalker, 100% my favorite character. Um, like I, I love the other characters in this film. Uh, Leia is right up there. Oh yeah. Um, Leia is like my short list for all of these. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I gotta give the edge to Luke here. It's just, this is the moment where Luke, you know, has his coming of age moment, right? Like, yes, he is a Jedi. Nothing's going to shake him. Right. Even when faced with, you know, the threat to his sister. Oh yeah. He loses it for a moment. Loses it. Right. Yeah. Loses it. Completely loses it. Yep. But when it comes down to that killing blow, he can't do it. it. Right. He's won. He doesn't need to go that extra step. He's won. That's right. So, yeah, the the, the growth from that farm boy in episode four, yeah, the, the characters are <laughs> night and day, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I mean, just night and day. And, night and, and day, yes. This is the Luke that you... This is the Luke that spawned all those EU stories. Absolutely. Right here. It wasn't, you know, episode four, episode five. No, it was Return of the Jedi Luke that spawned all those great stories we got over the years in the EU. Yes. For and... Sure. Yeah, that it, it's just for me, episode six, no brainer, Luke Skywalker. This was his time to shine. And shiny did. Absolutely. So yeah, just you know, great growth. And and from start to finish. From the moment he showed up. <laughs> and yeah. you know, green lightsaber blade. Oh yeah. That's sweet. So, I mean, I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, like when you got the, you know, the first two films, you know, Anakin's lightsaber was blue. Yes. That was given to Luke. Yes. Obi-Wan's lightsaber was blue. Yes. Vader's was red. Yes. He just thought that was the two colors. Right. And then Luke shows up with a green saber. I know. I know. The, like that right there just made you think, man, this guy's special, you know, for, for as much as I love the, uh, deleted scene of Luke Skywalker assembling his lightsaber, um, the reveal of the green blade with him on that skiff yep. is phenomenal. That's yeah. The, the, the John Williams music. The way it punches up right then. Oh my gosh. That oh that build up? Oh my god. Low strings? Yeah. With those like strikes, man, like dung. Dung. Awesome. Oh right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Such a great film. And 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 you know, we were meant to love Luke in this film. Absolutely. I mean, this is this this was the film that it was meant for Luke Skywalker to be your favorite character. And like picking anything else would be like going against the grain. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's hard to pick anything else. There, there, there's so many great moments with other characters, but yeah, Luke is the standout for sure. All right. Sequel trilogy time. Oh boy. Episode seven. <sighs> Favorite character and why I have to say Han Solo. Okay. Cause this is where we get to see how Han is, is <laughs> he shows us how, how he's still Han. Okay. 
I think we all know what I mean when I say that. Mm -hmm. And yet still wise with his years. So I, I just like how Han Solo, he, he, he basically sets the new cast off on the right path for their journey. When you think about it, he's, he's, He's the one who takes them where they have to go, you know? I mean, you know, we all know they were being followed, but, you know, uh, I don't know. It's it, To see him still being Han, yet uh, the moments with, like, like Finn, right? Mm -hmm. he, he's one thing about women. You know, they always know. <laughs> <laughs> they always find out the truth. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So, you know, he's he's got the wisdom of years under his belt that, uh, you know, someone having all of his life experience would have, but he's still Han Solo, you know. So, I dig Han. Right on. So, I'm going to go with Finn on this one. Okay. Um, mainly because Finn is a character who he was brought up knowing one thing. Yeah. And that was to be a stormtrooper. Yep. Taken very young. And Finn finds his humanity, right? Yeah. You know, he, he gets thrust into battle, you know, with the death and the, the shooting and the, the craziness that was battle. He you know, finds his humanity. It, there, there's something wrong with all this. Why are we doing this? And then he has to fight that throughout the film because it, it, along with it, finding his humanity, he found a great deal of fear. Yeah. And he was always afraid. He was on the run. He was He's running. And, and, you know, he was in the first order. He knows what they can do. Yeah. So he's having to battle that fear and ending up having to face it in the end. Um, because he, he finds a character that looks at him a different way. You know, he finds a person that looks at him in a different way, which is Ray. Yeah. Um, Han too. Han adds to this, um, journey of his. Yep. You know, he got to deal with people who were good people, not, programmed or just flat out bad right so he attached to that and had to grow from grow over his fear to save those that he started to care about these are all emotions that he was trained not to feel so he got hit with them all at the same time and just i i, I just enjoyed that dynamic him struggling with that okay so never meant to, he was never meant to feel emotion. Yeah. I like it. So, and, and he did a real good job throughout the entirety of the film being scared. Yeah. yeah. And then goes right into the heart of the beast to save someone he barely knows, but that's a person who showed compassion towards him, you know, cared about him. You know, look how fast he attached to Poe Dameron. Yeah. Poe wanted to know his name. He didn't know. <laughs> this person cares about my name? Right. He didn't know how to deal with that. That was that was next level stuff for him. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. I, I could see why he attached to the people he did. I could see why he had the fear that he did. But after abandoning those new people, he felt the guilt that he did and went back into it. Right. To go save them. I, I just, I, I loved Finn's story in episode seven. Cool. Episode eight. Okay. Um, I'm kind of up in the air between two. Um, I'm going to, okay. I'm going to say Ray. Okay. Cause. Uh, you, some people might not think there was enough of her training, but she was definitely learning throughout this episode. Uh, yeah. she was, you know, she had a mission, you know, 
uh, obviously to bring back Luke, but uh, in in a sense, she does, but not the way everyone was, expe- was expecting. Uh, and when it came down to it, again, she goes to confront her, you know, the 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 thing she most shouldn't want to, right? So, uh, and and just faces it head on. So, mm-hmm. that's seems to be a little theme here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, in the end, uh, seems to be even more in touch with the force and 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 have an understanding of it and what her place actually is. And, uh, you know, I, I, you go through all the interactions with her and Luke. I do like her character in this movie. So. Yeah. Right on. So I'm rolling with Kylo Ren, man. Ooh, going bad again. Yeah. I just, I, I'm sorry. I like, I, I feel like Adam driver's performance in this film was fantastic. It was good. His, his portrayal of his inner turmoil, like that, you know, his, his care for Ray, a, a person he know he, he knows next to nothing about. Right. Maybe for the wrong reasons, maybe, maybe for selfish reasons, wants to use her, whatever. But he's still conflicted. Yeah. But this episode really, really played on that conflict really well. And and I really thought towards the end of it that he had committed towards the bad. Yeah, it certainly seems so. And 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 just I I don't know. I just loved Adam Driver's performance in this. Kylo Ren just stood out to me in this one. He, he took down his master. Yeah, you know, he wasn't having none of that crap anymore. Took him down in a masterful way. Straight up fooled him, man. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it just and it, like there was just so many moments in that. Like he he smashed his helmet. Like he was throwing away this like pretender kind of like I just like this film okay. or th- his portrayal in this film and yeah, Kylo Ren hands down for me. All right. Stood out in episode eight. So episode nine, episode nine. Wow. This was a busy one. This, this is hard. A busy one. This one is hard. I would, I think I'm going to have to go with Ben Solo. Mm. Yeah, because this is where he realizes that everything that he was trying to be, all of the, all of the pushback that he was giving his parents, uh, everyone that he knew and grew up with, and, uh, you know, when when they said, "Hey, you should be this," he says, "No, I'm gonna be this." You know, not not in so many words or anything, but you know, just what what he did in life. So it took the help from Ray and Leia and his memory of his father to make him realize. But he does eventually come around to see that he's been doing things wrong this whole time, and when he does, he goes all in to do the right thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I, every, I, I, I feel like to some degree, everybody deserves some redemption. So, yeah. Yeah. Ben Solo. Oh, I like it. Cause I mean, this entire trilogy, I loved Adam driver's performance. So oh, yeah. like, the way he portrayed that character was just fantastic. But my pick for episode nine is Ray. Okay. Um, I just, I just loved Ray's growth echoed Luke Skywalker's. Um, yeah, 
course. Yeah. She was she was getting that training from Leia. Um she was faced with an impossible scenario. She finds out that she is the granddaughter of the most evil person in the galaxy <laughs> ever. Literally <laughs> ever. Yeah. And instead of letting that define her, she goes against it. Right. She, she could have easily let that push her to the dark. She could have let her emotion take over, let her anger take over. Like, why does this have to happen to me? You know, woe is me like anger and, and, she could have walked the dark path real quick after finding that out, but she didn't. She obviously became enraged. Sure. But she went to a place where she felt comfortable, which was Octu. Right. And there she found Luke. Yep. Again. (laughs) (laughs) yes and Luke helped guide her sure yep but she knew where to go in that moment she knew what she'd find there I absolutely believe that was a a a conscious decision for Ray she knew she'd find answers on Octu yeah of the way forward so I like that. And I like that she didn't let the fact that she was a Palpatine define her. She forged her own path forward. She, you know, was able to reach out to the Jedi of old for assistance and guidance and bring an end to Palpatine's reign. Yeah, totally. So just, just, and much like uh adam driver i love daisy's performance in the whole trilogy yeah she, like, did she was fabulous job. yes for sure so yeah ray episode nine my pick all right rogue one mm-hmm. oh, i have a feeling we're gonna have the same answer here it's possible i was gonna say cassian oh we're not gonna have the same answer okay uh i just liked that this thing that he's been fighting for for his whole life he's willing to fight for to the very end so that yeah. others may reap the benefits of all the work that he's put in so i mean it's 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 a lifetime of battling in a selfless manner so yeah i yeah, I love that about Cassian. Absolutely do. I and this was a hard one because there are so many good characters in this film. Yes, there are. And I know I've said that a couple times throughout this whole thing, but like Rogue One was it, it, I think it's special because these are new characters to us. Yes. Um in the other films we're like, "Oh, there's so many great characters," but yeah, we we say that when we had one, two, three films to develop those characters. Yeah. This one, this, these were all brand new. Yeah, for sure. And that made it really hard because they were all great. There there were so many great characters. But I got to go with the droid, man. Oh, really? K2SO is my favorite character in Rogue One. Yeah, he's a great character. I mean, (laughs) it's probably from years of building with R2 and 3PO. Yep. Things like that. The 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 almost humanity that comes from droids yeah. at times. Yeah. And then, you know, Chopper built on that even more. Because Chopper just had an attitude problem. <laughs> right. Yeah. So now you got humanity and attitude problem. You just took Chopper and 3PO and R2 and you combine them and you get K2SO. <laughs> yeah. Um I just, I love the way K2 was so loyal, spoke his mind. Yep. His, his mechanical mind. Yep. Yep. 
Um, and in the end made that sacrifice. Right. So they could go on. It was, that was the most emotion I've ever felt for a, for a droid, droid yeah. in star Wars. You even felt the, the understanding and humanity when, when Jin hands him the blaster, there, yeah. was, there was a moment of understanding there that was like, wow. Okay. Yeah. I felt that it was good. Yeah, I mean, and and that's a, that's a moment you see in film, and especially like westerns or something like that. The the one who's going to stay behind and shoot it out while yeah. the others escape. Yep. And then in this one, the bitch is they don't escape. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, but they still yeah, they got succeed, the job done. Yeah, but they all die. <laughs> yeah. And that adds to the 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 difficulty in this film as well because you end up feeling so much emotion for every character because they all die along the way. It's just, that's a tough film to pick, but yeah, I got to go with the droid, man. Okay. K2 is, and, and that understanding at the end too, with, uh, Jin and K2, those two were at each other's throats. Oh yeah. Yeah. They, they didn't like each other. They did not like each other for sure. So, man, I got to watch this film again. Yeah. <laughs> I love Rogue One. That's oh, such it's, a good movie. It is a very good movie. All right. I feel like this one's baiting us into picking a character. Yeah, I think we might both pick the same character on this one. But Solo. You mean Chewbacca's movie? Oh man, I'm with you. <laughs> so uh yeah. I I have to go with Chewbacca. I think uh you know, Jonas did a great job in this movie. Um, this yeah, I is... mean, it's another tough one because you want to go with Han. It's Han's movie. Exactly. But you want to go with Lando because, man, Lando was awesome. Right. But man, this was Chewie's movie. It was Chewie's movie for sure. Uh, I... I... From from the very moment we were introduced to Chewie in this movie, uh, you know he provided some of the comic relief. He he showed his loyalty throughout, and and it gives us insight into you know all of the interactions we see with him and Han later on in in the chronology. So, uh. And I don't know, I, I, you know, the whole, uh, the, the whole bit on Kessel and everything, it was, you know, there was emotion there and, 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 you know, he helped, uh, yeah. I mean, Chewbacca drew, he, he drove so much of the emotion in this film. Yeah, for sure. And not only the emotion, but really strangely enough, a lot of the dialogue. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, his input was always, you know, you got the standard Chewbacca stuff. You have no idea what he's saying. But the responses is like, it's, it just, Chewbacca drove so much of the story with his interjections and stuff like that. Like, oh, yeah. You know, even down to, you know, at the end, you know, he shows Chewie the cards and Chewie's, uh, oh, yeah, know, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yep. I mean, a lot of credit goes to Jonas for his acting here because without his acting and dealing with that, you know, lack of dialogue. Yep. Um, Chewbacca's character doesn't get driven forward because you don't know what he's saying. If the character that's acting with him at that time doesn't, you know, react in a way that helps you understand right you know and with this i mean he had to benefit he had more of a benefit than uh harrison did like they actually like wrote out all the lines oh. like this is what he's saying yeah this time around harrison just had his lines yes and he had to deal with the grunts and growls you know like, yes yes true so he had a little bit of an advantage there but yeah I mean, his performance was good and, and really 
fueled Chewbacca. But Chewbacca, to me, fueled the overall story so much that it's just, it's hard to not pick him as the favorite. Yeah, for sure. This was Chewie's tale. Yes, absolutely. So we're in agreement then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Woo, that was fun. Yeah, it was. Woo. That was a lot. That was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We need to do more stuff like that, Doug. Yeah. I agree. Just pick random crap to talk about. Because, yeah, isn't that what we always did, right? Just, that's that's uh, exactly right. It's like, you know what? I was thinking about something. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah, that is definitely something we will do much more in the future. Have something to add to the conversation? Or you just want to let us know how we're doing? Email us, show at thewarsandmore.com. That's the best place to get in on the action. But if social media is a little more to your liking, at the Wars and More on Twitter is always a good place to interact with us. And we're also on Facebook, facebook.com slash the Wars and More. And of course, your portal to this and everything else, the Wars and More, is the Wars and More.com. All right, all right. That was fun. But no matter how much fun we have, it's going to be hard to top the fact that we still get to talk about Clone Wars right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. I mean, you know, when we started this podcast, I didn't think we'd ever be talking about the Clone Wars. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I thought <laughs> like, that ship had sailed. <laughs> like, as far as new Clone Wars. But we get to, and this is, this week we're talking about episode five of season seven, Gone with a Trace. Um, Ahsoka's back. Yes. Something we've all been anticipating. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, that's that's our character when we're talking about the Clone Wars. This, like, the star of the yeah, Clone Wars. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> uh, it was. I mean, the Clone Wars has, even though there's so many stories, you know, intertwined in there, has really become Ahsoka's tale. Oh, for sure. So it it's only fitting that we get back to Ahsoka's story. And I didn't quite expect this to pick up what is seemingly very, very shortly after she left the Jedi temple. Yeah. It seems that way. Doesn't it? I mean, (laughs) yeah, she seems to be running, you know? Yeah. I think, I think what we're, what we're seeing here is, uh, Ahsoka is kind of lost, right? She she doesn't, you know, she doesn't have the faith in the Jedi Order anymore, and she's trying to find herself, trying to figure out who she is, what she wants to be. And, you know, this is kind of like uh first step in, I mean, in some ways, this, this kind of has a, a uh, the vibe of like uh, the old seventies TV shows to me, where you know, so uh, the the wanderers wandering across the country and runs across a small town and you know has to get someone there out of a jam, you know, it's kind of kind of has that vibe with with the uh, uh, the debt collector guy and his thugs and stuff, you know. Yeah, I I do find it odd that she runs right back to the. The underworld of Coruscant. Yeah. You know, her experience down there wasn't exactly the best. Right. I this but but this was kind of like you know, I think they made a, a really clear point of this is not by intention because that speeder bike of hers just kind of like <clears throat> fell apart. Well, I mean, she was definitely heading to a lower level right. probably not that far probably down, not but, that far exactly that's what i'm thinking but i mean the lower levels period just are from from the way it sounds in this episode at least uh anything below the surface is just kind of like forgotten well oh, that was that was a point i loved hearing about because when ahsoka's talking to trace and 
you know, where you're from and all that. Um, in, in Trace's mind, she's talking about the, the Jedi and starting wars and Ahsoka tries to correct her and she's like, what does it matter? Cause they, they're not thinking about us down here. And it's like, wow. So this is like a, the, uh, a real person on the street type of view of what's going on with the clone wars. Yeah. You know, it's like, they're, they're not really thinking about us. That's all, you know, grand galaxy wide, you know, political machinations that don't really affect them. So I thought that was really interesting because that, that was, uh, a real look into the mindset of, you know, maybe your average middle class or, uh, lower middle class citizen of course, huh? you know, I would say probably even lower than that. Cause you think about the levels, you're, you're 1,313 levels yeah. below the surface. I, I guess it's it's just, you know, this is a view into a completely different world for Ahsoka. Yeah. And, you know, these people are having to deal with different problems from what she's used to. And. Well, yeah, and she's familiar with some dissent about how the, the Jedi are handling things. Oh, yeah. Although but. I, I, it is nice, though, to see that even though she's like I said, lost her faith in the Jedi order. She still believes, you know, they're trying to do the right thing. Cause she even says as much. They're trying to stop the war. Yeah. I mean, her, her leaving wasn't because she thought the Jedi were doing bad. Her leaving was, you know, how fast the Jedi turned. It was a personal betrayal thing. Yes. Sure. how fast they turned on her so yeah she still thinks they're trying to do the right thing they're trying to save the galaxy from war but she herself you know it, it like it, it's you know like your current employer doesn't appreciate what you did you don't stay with that employer you know like exactly yeah very much like that that's that's definitely a, a, a relatable way to look at that for all of us. Yeah, you know, like you, you, the second someone said you did something wrong, they just roll with it. Yeah. Well, apparently you misjudged how I've been handling myself for the last, you know, decade. Yeah. Well, I, I, not quite a decade, but <laughs> but let's say let's say five years. Yeah. You know, you misjudged how I handled myself for five years or, or you at least took that and threw it out the window. The second someone said I did something wrong, didn't listen to me, didn't look into it. Yeah. Just, yeah, sorry. We, we made a mistake. We still like to keep you on though. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I guess we were wrong. Yeah. We'll welcome you back with open arms. It's like, well, wait a minute. Maybe you shouldn't have thought i was capable of doing what you're saying i did yeah i tell him to piss off too yeah exactly so but instantly you see ahsoka's i wouldn't say instantly as this episode progresses and we get to the crux of it then instantly you see ahsoka's apprehension with droids yeah <laughs> i thought it was funny uh uh, she, she kind of like, she you know beats around the bush as to you know, her what her experiences are and stuff, which I get, you know, but yeah, I've had a lot of you know not so great experiences with droids. It's like that's like putting it mildly. Yeah, I also like the little nod to uh, uh, binary load lifters. Yeah, it's like hey, you need C three PO to talk to those guys. <laughs> Yeah, apparently they're completely crazy. Yeah, which I, just, I had no idea. Yeah, <laughs> me either. I didn't know that 
binary load lifters meant like, you know, you know, Hulk smash. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what this droid looked like. And it was like, it was just running away and trying to destroy stuff. And it's like, wow, that's just kind of crazy. Yeah. When it beat the speeder with the other speeder, that I'm was like, funny. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I loved it. So you know, forgot the restraining bolt, but Hey, good thing they had that tracking. Yeah. Yeah. Which I guess that worked out well for them. Yeah. So they, they, uh, were able to disable the droid and get it hooked up to this forklift style speeder. And all of a sudden it's going to fall over the edge and Ahsoka gets to use her force powers. Funny how yeah. the only one who notices is this little Twi'lek girl. And, yeah, it's kind of like gets that look. That, Whoa! Yeah, that was funny. Uh, but I have a feeling that no matter what Ahsoka does, this is going to be kind of like one of those running themes, I think, where no matter yeah, what that... she does, she's going to end up having, you know, to use her powers and get found out, you know? I always love, like, like in situations like that. Uh-huh. Like, there's always a child, right? There's oh, always yeah. a child that sees it and then, like, looks around. Does anyone see this shit? Right. Like, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> the kids are never paying attention to the same things the adults are. No. You know, that's <laughs> But the kids, like, in, in, in situations like this, the kids see the stuff the adults just don't see. Like. Yeah. Like, uh. Hey, y'all. That chick's using the force. Right. And. I also found it funny because, like, this speeder's got a winch, and it starts to work and then starts to fail, and then all of a sudden it's just working again? I, <laughs> You know, I guess, maybe, but, you know. I mean, I, it, it was still, it was failing, but it was still spinning. Yeah. And since it didn't have to actually carry the load. Right. That's. It was able to retract the cable. Yeah. But I don't know. That was that was kind of cool. So what, what, I gotta say, there's a little bit of a design flaw in this uh, this forklift that they're driving around. Yeah, what's that? Um, so apparently the 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 clamps, yeah, move like shark jaws in like every bad shark movie. Like you're driving, and these things are just like ow 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 <laughs> ow ow ow. <laughs> Like, you're not controlling that? Like, okay, I'll close them now. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get it in between the ow. Right, right. <laughs> I thought that was goofy. Yeah, but hey, you know, it's... It and, and speaking... And, and when I say this, I'm not bashing on the show because I totally enjoyed this episode. Sure. But did anyone else feel weird about some of the animation in this like did it seem odd yes and yes, off a little bit there was a couple times and it was it was very specific at these times that things just looked kind of huh that was that was weird because it was a moment and i i felt the exact same way uh at the same point both times i watched this episode so it was like Huh. That was that was a little odd for some reason. Don't even know why. I can't place yeah. my finger on it, but Exactly. Felt the same way. Couldn't really put my finger on what was weird about it. Maybe with several more viewings I can kind of isolate that, but I I don't know. Right. Um and and the weird part about it was it seemed to be during times of dialogue. Yes. Not during times of action. Normally during times of action, you see little anomalies in animation, things like that. The action sequences seem to be fantastic. Yes. And then there was like these weird little parts of dialogue that the animation was just like, whoa, what was that? <laughs> and it was fleeting. Yes. It seemed to you be, know, it didn't, it didn't linger. It seemed to be more prominent with the new characters too. Uh, Trace and uh, uh, Rafa. 
there was a moment or two with Ahsoka as well, though. Okay. And it's just kind of like, what was what was that? Yeah. And, and I think I noticed it more with Ahsoka. I noticed it with the other characters, but with Ahsoka, we're so familiar with how Ahsoka looks. It's true. So those were like the kind of stick out moments to me. Like, oh, that was a little odd. Yeah. I mean, granted, there's changes to the animation process now. Because they've made advancements. Yes. So this is, I'm assuming, probably some of the new uh, animation styles they've come up with mixed in with old and they just stood out. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't know which is which. I'm not sure, but overall still pretty darn good. I mean, Oh yeah, it was great episode and, and, and very engaging. I thought the, the choice to put this episode after the bad batch arc. Uh Uh-huh. Um, just kind of knowing what we're going to get with Ahsoka, especially later on. Yep. With the, uh, Siege of Mandalore. Yep. I assume that arc's going to be pretty well paced. Oh, I think so too. Um, I don't know if they decided like, oh, maybe we'll put the fast, put a fast arc, then a slower arc, then a fast arc. I almost feel like it's got more to do with. Uh, you know, it's the Clone Wars, so let's roll out the clones and visit what Ahsoka is doing, and then we're gonna get Ahsoka with the clones later on, kind of thing. Know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I know linear is not really their thing. Yeah, at least not in the Clone Wars. Yeah, that's uh, and. I feel like it's going to, it's also going to feel weird making a time jump. Cause I almost feel like you're going to have to make a little bit of a time jump from this arc to the next arc. I agree. I'm just not quite sure how long of a time jump that's going to be because you know, I, I don't know. I mean, if there is some sort of a time jump, I hope that they, give us some sort of indication i mean there's got to be something because in the previews we've seen anakin and ahsoka's interaction isn't like it's been like two weeks and they're seeing each other again right seems like it's been a minute yeah been a minute but i don't think it's been like years you know oh i would agree with that I don't think there's years left, even from when Ahsoka left the temple. Right. The, a year, maybe. Because <laughs> Anakin, in his uh, state, was pretty close to, you know, Revenge of the Sith, Anakin. Yeah. Yeah, we got that, a little bit of that uh, in the last arc. Yeah. But. Yeah, I mean, no complaints. No, no, no. None at all. I'm just. Like I said, I'm just questioning the the placement a little bit. Like, I feel like this would have been a good place to start. And maybe that's more of it. Like, i not saying pacing-wise, just take that for a second and throw it away. You know, all that crap I said. <laughs> yeah. Um, but just, I feel like starting with Ahsoka would have been appropriate. You know, so we're going to get this Ahsoka arc that's a little maybe lighter on action, deeper on story. I feel like maybe starting with Ahsoka would have been appropriate for the Clone Wars. The whole, the whole, the whole shebang started with Ahsoka. Yeah. I mean, you so certainly could have maybe done the it season way. starting with Ahsoka and ending with Ahsoka would have been pretty sweet. I don't think the way they did it was a bad way though. I will say no, that. no, no, but, I don't know. It just felt like, I don't know, a little odd with the placement. Like, that's all. Okay. That's all. So, I gotta say, Ahsoka's fight scene was awesome. Yeah. I mean, 
she was able to take out these thugs and uh, this is another spot you can see the astonishment on trace's face when uh she catches that punch you know that was like oh there is more to this little tegruta than you might have thought so right what do you think about the uh dichotomy there between trace and rafa um this seems to be like a uh another classic trope to me that uh you know it works well in a lot of storytelling a lot of tv and stuff is that you have one sibling that's kind of on the up and up and along for the ride with uh you know another one who's not all how do you put it uh a little bit shady and uh yeah. kind of calling the shots i got a feeling before we're done we're going to see trace kind of uh step up and, and push back push back yeah, you're seeing the the seeds of pushback there. Like, yes, she doesn't like that lifestyle. Exactly. She knows nothing down there on that level's free, but doesn't mean you have to get it in nefarious ways. Exactly. Right. There's nothing wrong with with you know, especially when you're in that kind of environment. You know, nothing's free. You know, you got to earn what you have, but you know, you don't have to do it like you said in a nefarious way so so let's let's take a little bit of a a leap here okay and how does this end does her sister come around to her way of thinking or is there going to be a kind of nasty split here i'm it's early on in this arc but i'm gonna venture to guess they are going to go their separate ways. That's what I'm thinking. Cause, and I think what it's going to boil down to is Trace is just going to realize that, look, I'm not going to be able to make you change, you know, Rafa. Uh, so in order for me to live the type of life I want to live, I just need to cut ties, at least for the time being. Do you think it's going to be a choice between her sister and her new friend? No. I just think that Ahsoka is going to help her realize what she needs to do all along. What do you think? Well, I'm, I'm, I think I'm right there with you. I, I think the seeds are already sown that she kind of disagrees with her sister's way of doing things. Yeah. But I don't see Rafa going away from that no no i think uh, i think she's convinced this is the way to do business down here yep and that's that so yeah i think we're gonna see kind of a split here i don't see rafa coming around to um trace's way of thinking no i would agree that's a character i think that would see that as weak yeah exactly weak or or you know she She's strong headed enough to where she thinks her way is the right way. Yeah. And, and that's it. So, cause she's always, she's always telling her, look, stick with me. You know, I've got all the answers kind of thing, which is kind of, yeah. And she's used to being in charge, right? You know, kind of being the, the head honcho of the group. Yeah. The group of two, when but someone, when someone has to tell you, you know, hey, I got all the answers. Usually means they don't have all the answers. Right. And they did emphasize an old, older sibling. True. Yes. Older siblings tend to think they know the best. Yep. As an older sibling, I know this is not the case. <laughs> hey, at least you can admit that. That's good. Yeah, it's the case most of the time, but it's not always the case. <laughs> nice. But yeah, I mean, I'm an older <laughs> sibling too. So <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes your younger siblings actually have a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's rare, but yeah. it happens sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Yeah, they have their moments, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, good arc. Great to see Ahsoka back. Definitely. You know, it's it's kind of like we said, it's synonymous with Clone Wars. Oh, for sure. Uh, Ahsoka is synonymous. Like we can't have the Clone Wars back without Ahsoka. And it was a breath of fresh air. For sure. The clones were, you know, having the clones in the first four episodes was great. That's the other half of the equation, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, because, I, I, like, it was the story of the clones and the story of Ahsoka and, like, Anakin, Obi-Wan, all them were along for the ride with some good details along the way. Yeah, for sure. I, I almost feel like it's this this very basic math problem we have, right? Part one mm-hmm. is the first arc. You know, it's 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 that's factor one, and now we're getting factor two. And in the final arc, we are going to get the sum of all. So, yeah, yeah, good way of putting it. All right. Well, if you have anything to add to this conversation can always email us show at the words of more.com. It's the best way to get a hold of us, but we're also on social media. We're at the words of more on Twitter, facebook.com slash the words of more. You can find all that and all the ways to find the show over at the words more.com. Any final thoughts this week, Doug? No, I think that about covers it. All right. We'll talk next week.